What's up guys, Sean the Bro here, and today we're going to be going over multi-button inputs, multi-button commands, part 4. And specifically what that means is we are going to be fixing an issue where spamming inputs would sometimes lead to the incorrect command. This was due to some of the input buffer logic relating to specific commands where multiple inputs had to be pressed at the same time to execute them. So I'm loading this up in practice where you can see the hitboxes and everything because I want you to be able to see my input buffer. So I have my light attack, which performs this action, my heavy attack, which performs this action. If I do it right, it's somewhat difficult. So you can see I messed it up the first two times, but if I press them at the same time, I can actually perform a throw, and that's what I just did there. So if I were to do this again, just like that, I can perform my throw. And so great, throw is working, everything is good there. It's a little hard to perform because we don't have any sort of leniency yet in the input buffer. So if another action can be taken, uh, like the light attack or the heavy attack, if I don't press them basically on the same frame or one frame apart to be able to cancel it, then it is going to take those actions. And that's okay. That is something we know, and that is something that we have to work for in the future. But the issue was, if I was able to spam an attack like this, well, eventually I would actually perform my multi-button commands. So I would perform the throw by... by pressing my light attack or my heavy attack as quickly as I could. It just has to be one of the inputs in the sequence. If I was pressing it as fast as I could, I would perform it. Um, and that is no longer going to be an issue. I can now only perform it if I'm pressing them at the same time. If I'm spamming it at the same time, sure, the buttons may overlap on the right frames and I can execute it. But it is no longer going to fire when we just press the same button and just spam it over and over again. All right, so that's what we're going to be covering today. Very excited to get this one out because after this, as far as I'm aware, the input buffer does not have any other remaining bugs. There are, of course, things that we haven't covered yet. Uh, like I said, the leniency in the frame, so that it makes it easier to perform them. There's other things such as quarter circles that we haven't done. But as far as bugs for what we've implemented, this system is going to be solid after this solution. So if you want to get caught up in the series and check out everything we've done to get to this point, we're pretty far along. We are on episode 147 of the fighting game tutorial series. So we still have a long way to go, but we've come really far since the beginning. So feel free to click on that playlist, check out everything we've done to get here. Alternatively, if you don't care about that, but you do care about the input buffer and the multi-button inputs, I'll link you to the first episode of the input buffer series right here. All right, now we can get started. So almost everything we do is gonna be in code today outside of some testing we can do in the blueprint. So we're gonna to go to the code and we're specifically going to go to our fighter template character class. So in this case, we're gonna start with the dot H. Scroll up to the top. And what we need to go to is where we have our command data. We don't care about a specific command in this case because like, yes, it is only the multi input commands such as the throw where this issue is occurring. However, we just care about the F command data as a whole. So let's scroll down. We have a structure called F command and one called F command input. So F command has an array of F command inputs and that's how we know what is required to perform the command. To perform a simple command like light attack, the only thing required is the light attack. However, to perform something like a directional attack, we have to be walking a certain direction or holding a certain direction when we press the attack button. So the commands can be a lot more advanced than just a simple button. And in the case of the throw it is the light button and the heavy button under the status of hold, meaning these both have to be pressed or held at the same time. It cannot be you can't do light attack, release light attack, then heavy attack, release heavy attack. At some point, they have to overlap where the light attack and the heavy attack were down at the same time. So with that in mind, that is how we determine the, you know, what has to go into the commands to perform them. So because of that, each F command input has data of the input type, the status, and if there is an amount of charge frames that is required. So for example, in the charge attack, I might have to hold back for 30 frames and then press an input to do it. I've added another variable here. It's pretty simple. It's just a Boolean and I've called it is currently held. 
because what can happen is we can track every single input the player does and we can compare it against the inputs in a command. That's already what we do in our input buffer. However, we can do something additional to determine if a specific input is already being held. And in this case, if it is, we can go ahead and ignore some of the logic or add some extra logic to it. That way we don't accidentally trigger other commands we don't want to trigger. It'll make more sense when we're in the CPP because I'll explain where the bug was and uh, why we have to do this other logic to make this work. But for now, just go to your F command input and add a boolean. And we'll be good to go. Once you've added that, you can go back to the fighter template character.cpp and we can scroll down. We can go down all the way to our standard uh, input buffer logic. So scroll down to check input buffer for command using type. Now, I've gone over this so many times and, and it's changed a lot. So I'm going to give you a quick refresher of everything we've got to this point. In this command or in this function, what happens is we loop through every single command. We determine if we can use the command based on the meter we have and the meter that is required. Then we set up a correct sequence counter, which tracks how correct the player is in performing a command. So how many inputs they've gotten correct out of how many are required to perform it. So if it is back forward A and I press back forward, then I have two correct, right? So we can know which uh, inputs we have to check for next. We make sure that the frames that the inputs have to be pressed between. So if you only have eight frames to perform these three inputs, we make sure we are within those valid number of frames grab all the the inputs in the input buffer within those frames that way we can check them against the inputs required for each command then what we do is we add the logic for all the specific cases so we have logic for chargeable commands and what happens when they're released then we have every standard input so this is if we have not perform this command let's check and see if we have gotten another correct input within this command right so using the backward forward a example if we press backward we know that we've pressed that input that is related to one of the commands so we want to do some logic with it so in here where we check to see if the correct sequence counter is greater than negative one meaning we are not ready to perform this command yet we have a bunch of conditions in this if statement to see if this was a correct input for that command. So in this case, we check to see and make sure we're pressing the right button or it is contained within a multi input command. And the status is not equal to release. So basically, if we press the right button, or it's one of the buttons that would be in the throw, for example, so light attack or heavy attack, and that type is not release, we know that this was a valid input so far. We also have to make sure that the status matches the status that is on the command. Okay, So if the status of the button is to release the button, we want to make sure that the player released the button at that time as well. Alternatively, if the type is hold, Again, like for a multi-input command like throw, we don't want to ever trigger a release. Since we really only have press and release actions that we can that the player can trigger. They can press a button or they can release a button. They can't hold the button. Hold is something we gather on the end. We take their incoming data. If it's kept for this number of frames, it's a hold. But the player can't manually say, I'm holding it off of one frame of data. It's either a press or a release. So if the status is press and the type wanted for the command is hold, this is also valid. Lastly, we check and see if the number of charge frames is greater than or equal to the required charge frames. So for most attacks that don't have charge frames, this is going to just be skipped because it'll be zero is greater than or equal to zero, which will pass. And that means we've 
successfully done an input, the player's done an input that gets them farther along in the command. Else, if the type was not equal to none and the status was not equal to release, we reset the correct sequence counter. Lastly, we had an if statement in here that was else if it is a multi input command and the status was equal to release, we reset the correct sequence counter. Now, this is correct, right? Because as I was mentioning just up above here, at this part, this if statement. We don't want to be able to release this input if we're trying to perform the throw and it's light attack and heavy attack. If we release either of them before the command is triggered, well, we break the, the link there. We want to reset the correct sequence counter because we're no, no longer able to perform the throw. Even if we press the, the correct input next, we've already released one of the inputs that we need to be pressing or holding at the same time. So we were resetting the correct sequence counter, and that was good. However, that's not all we need to do, because the problem is, even if we release one, if it was still in the input buffer and within the number of frames required, this if statement up above here, it would return true that it is a multi-input command, and the status might not be release. So if I press the light attack twice very quickly, it is going to go into this function, say, no, it's not a release type. And then it will decrease the correct sequence counter each time we do that. All right, so before we get into what we're doing here, let's go into the is input and multi input command function because I think that will make things easier to understand. But just know that resetting the correct sequence counter here is not enough because it will not automatically get rid of all the progress we've made on this command. Sure, it resets the counter. However, the inputs are still in the input buffer. So if this function runs and keeps returning true at this point, where we decrease the correct sequence counter, then we're actually going to run into that issue where we perform the incorrect attack. So let's scroll down for a second and let's go to is input and multi input command. Now, this is what I had before. What I commented out here is what you will probably have in yours unless you modified it at all. So we can take a look at what we were doing. We were going through the inputs for, so a command is passed in to this function and it has the number of inputs for it, right? Each command has all their inputs tied to it. We were looping through all of the inputs. We were making sure that the type was a press, again, to ignore releases. We were also making sure that the input status so the status required for that input on the command was hold if this is the case we can return true because we know that we pressed one of the inputs in the multi input command right well yes but also no because if we just do this logic alone every time we press light attack this is going to return true the problem with that is you could spam the button and before the input buffer clears or before your, your maximum frames between inputs clears, then you could press the light attack many, many times. It would keep returning true. And thus you could spam and use the incorrect attack because you know what? This does not check and see if the type is equal to the, to the specific inputs. It has to be one input in the command, okay? Input dot input type equal to pressed input. If I keep pressing light attack, yes, one of the inputs in the command is light attack. So it is going to return true. Notice how it, it does not actually require me to, pr to press both the light attack and the heavy attack to return true. Just as long as one of the inputs in here is, is one of the inputs the player pressed, then it will return true. And that is not what we want. We don't want any input to return true, but instead we need at least one of each input. We need at least one light, one heavy attack. So this was not enough to do what we wanted. We're going to basically use this logic and expand upon it, make it a little bit better. So for this guy, this is the new logic now. And what we need to do is check and see if we can actually access the specific inputs. So we have to make sure that both of the inputs are pressed. If one is already pressed, pressing it again should not do anything until it is released, right? So if we press them, even if you release it to spam it, you wanna make sure that they are both held at the same time to actually trigger it properly. Okay. 
So instead of using this for each loop, which is the auto variable name colon and then your your container, I'm using a standard for loop here. So I change it to integer i equals zero. I is less than command dot input types dot num and increment i. This is because we are going to access this a little bit differently. We're going to access everything directly on the command as opposed to keeping a copy. This will allow us to modify the logic such as is currently held much more easily, and that is better for us. However, this alone is not actually enough. We also need to make a change in the function itself, and we need to do something called pass by reference. You've seen this a few times in blueprints if you've been following the series. You may have seen the copy get or copy ref in the blueprint or, or just array get array get ref get copy that sort of thing and the difference is the copy literally makes a copy that is just for that quick use and then it deletes itself afterward if we pass it by reference we're grabbing this specific value and we can change things on it there's a time and a place to use both, but we actually now have to change is currently held directly on the command because we're going to be checking for it and using it. So in this case, what we should do is add an ampersand, a little and sign there essentially, to the end of the variable type. So f command ampersand underscore command. Now you have to also do that in the .h file. So if you scroll down to that function in here as well, we have is input in multi input command and I've added the ampersand here. There you go. Now what this does is when we pass this command in in the function above right here is input in multi input command character commands cur command, we're passing the actual structure of this command over. That way any changes we make on this variable inside that function will be returned here. The character commands array will actually change when we change the values inside the function. Okay, and now this is exactly the same as it was. The only difference here is that we are using our new type as opposed to that copied input type. So we need to do underscore command dot input types i index i dot input type. Okay, this is the same as this. Just again, this is using it directly off this command that's passed into the function, not this copy that was made in this for loop. Equal equal underscore pressed input. That's all the same. And we were doing and input dot input status. So we have to convert that to command dot input types I dot input status equals E input status hold. And at that point, we were only returning true, we still want to return true, but we're not done quite yet, we have to add something. So now I'm going to get rid of this because we no longer need it, that has been properly converted. And so now we have to make sure that this input is not already held if we're going to set it if we're going to set it to be held and then return true. This is the major part here. This is the big part. This is the fix. Because if we did not check to see if it was already held and we just return true, what this means is, okay, so we have light attack and heavy attack in this command. The player pressed light attack. That means we can return true. And that's all it checked. So I never had to press heavy. I could just keep pressing light. This would return true and we would be good to go. We would perform the command if we if we pressed it within a given number of frames, it could go ahead and perform that. That's not what we want. So now we have to use this new boolean we added. We want to make sure that it is not already considered true because if it is, we want to just ignore it. If not exclamation point underscore command dot input types I dot is currently held. So if this is not equal to true, then we want to set it to be true because now it is being held at least for this frame. We'll determine if it gets released next frame, all that good stuff. So it's not a problem. Then we return true. However, if this fails, 
this is going to get skipped. And then if it is no longer found in any of these for loops, we're going to return false. Now, returning false is good because it stops it from being added additional times by pressing the same input. However, that also doesn't really solve our problem because yes, this is good gatekeeping this and blocking this if it's already one of the held inputs. Again, good. However, if we're never resetting the value, if we're never resetting is currently held, then it's not going to actually work. It's just going to say, yes, it's true. And then you'll never be able to perform specific commands or if you are able to perform them, you're going to just keep performing them because they're never reset. So you can see it can cause some issues. So what we have to do now is actually reset this value. So let's scroll back up to this is check input buffer for command using type. Okay, this is right where we were. This is the if statement that I was talking about earlier. And we had this else if that also calls this function. In here, we only had this line before. So we've added all of this right here. So let's take a look at this for loop. So now what I do is I'm going through each command. Okay, I'm grabbing the specific command in the in the input types and I'm looping through it, grabbing every input that is in that command. So we're going to loop through each of the commands in here because we don't care about order. So it doesn't have to be in the same order. It just has to be they both have to be held at the right time. And so in this case, if it is a multi if it is within the multi input command and the status is released, meaning we released that input, we do want to reset that is currently held back to false. Again, we don't want it to be stuck in true. Otherwise, we would never get our logic correct. We would either continuously do commands or never be able to do commands and neither of which is good. So we're going to loop through each of the input types in the command here. So again, the case of a throw, we have light attack and heavy attack. We have two input types, light and heavy. So we want to loop through them. And if the type that we found or the type that we're currently on, say light attack is equal to the type that we're looking at in the input buffer, this one that we set up here, then that means we release the light attack. So we want to set that variable back to false. We want to set that light attack input on that command back to false. We no longer are holding that input. So it is not currently held. There we go. And now this perfectly allows us to use our input buffer the way we've been using it. It doesn't change this logic. It doesn't extract it so that it has to be its own system. But now we can check which inputs for which commands are held. And that way for these commands and these actions that have multiple buttons that have to be pressed at the same time, you can make it to where they have to be unique buttons, right? They can't just be the light attack over and over again, but instead it has to be the light and the heavy. Otherwise you won't return true twice or however many times, in which case you won't be able to decrement the correct sequence counter and then you won't be able to perform the command. As simple as that. All right. So there we go, guys. That's all I got for you today. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed, please subscribe. It does more for myself and the channel than anything else you can do. It is completely free. And I really appreciate it. I want to give a huge shout out to my YouTube membership and Patreon members and supporters. Thank you guys for everything you've done and for continuing to support me month after month. I really appreciate it. I'm so incredibly grateful and I am glad you guys are enjoying this series as much as I am. If you had any issues with this tutorial or any of my tutorials, feel free to join the Discord community. There's a link in the description. I'd be happy to get you sorted, help you out. Anyway, guys, that's all I got. So thank you so much for watching. I'm Sean the Bro, and I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye, guys.